Podcast. O que acende a sua vontade de começar algo? Tem uma faísca em você que te chama para empreender, investir, dar novos rumos para sua vida. E para todos os seus começos, você pode contar com Santander Select. Um banco mais pessoal, mais próximo, mais humano. Um time de especialistas com olhar atento para cada momento da sua vida. Porque você sabe, só quem já deu muitos passos está pronto para continuar começando. Santander Select. Começa em você, começa agora. This week on the Deep Leadership Podcast. And every time you're fully present, you say to that person, you are important, you matter, you count. And the most simple and practical way to develop being more present is to listen before you formulate your response. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Now, if you've been listening for a long time, I want to thank you for tuning in each week. The success of this podcast is because of your loyal viewership. Now, if you're new, welcome aboard. The purpose of the podcast is to build a world with better bosses. Now, we do this by introducing you to the greatest minds working in the leadership space. Now, our guests are authors, academics, podcasters, business leaders, military leaders, and successful leadership practitioners in a variety of industries. And our goal is to provide provide you with practical information to help you along your leadership path. Now, whether you're new to leadership, leadership or season pro, you're going to get something out of this podcast each and every week. So thank you for listening in. It's an honor to be your host and your leadership guide through this journey. Now, in this podcast episode, Brian Biro joins me to share his insights on breakthrough leadership, the power of optimism, and the importance of creating a positive collaborative culture. He discusses the principles of breakthrough leadership, including shaping your future through vision, energizing and engaging your team, and building strong relationships. Byro also draws lessons from the leadership styles of legendary coaches like John Wooden, Pat Summit, and others, highlighting the value of humility, teamwork, and being fully present with others. The overall message is that effective leadership is rooted in empowering people, fostering a sense of belonging and purpose, and cultivating a mindset of growth and possibility. This was a powerful conversation I know you'll love, so are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Brian Byro. Brian is America's breakthrough speaker. He has delivered nearly 1,900 presentations around the world over the last 34 years. He's the author of 16 books, including his bestseller, Beyond Success, and his brand new book, Lessons from Legends. Brian was rated number one from over 40 speakers at four consecutive Inc. Magazine International Conferences with degrees from Stanford University and UCLA. Brian has appeared on Good Morning America and CNN. Brian was recently honored as one of the top 10 interactive keynote speakers in North America. And get this, one of the top 50 motivational speakers in the world. And I'm excited to have him on the show to learn from his unique perspective and experiences. So Brian, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much, John. I'm excited just from our pre pregame talk. I know we're going to have a great time. Yes, absolutely. I'm honored to have you on the show. And again, I'm, I'm excited to hear from you. You've, you've done a lot of speaking. You've met a lot of leaders. You've you motivated a lot of people. So get us started. So what I introduce you as America's Breakthrough Speaker. What is that? Well, you know, John, breakthroughs are the best things in life. When we break through from fear to freedom, we break through from ego to ego, we break through from silos to synergy. Uh, and I've had three really neat careers. My first career was a U.S. swimming coach. So I was working with athletes to break through those obstacles and mental limits that they can put on themselves. Then my corporate career I ended up being a vice president of two large corporations where we're trying to break through a unstoppable culture. And for 34 years as a professional speaker and an author, so breakthrough has been my passion, understanding how can we make breakthroughs not only possible, but actually planable. And that's really been my work over the last 
uh, last 48 years through those three careers. And really, uh, it's come down to a kind of a simple understanding of what I call breakthrough leadership. So that's that's kind of the basis of why, why I'm called America's Breakthrough Speaker, because my focus is to help others break through. I absolutely love that. Now, <clears throat> this seems to be your passion. You've written 16 books, and my hat's off to you because I've ever, o- only written three. Uh, I know the effort that it takes, so <laughs> my hat's off to you. You travel around the world, you're speaking, you're teaching, you're talking about team building, leadership, coaching, life balance, this idea of breakthrough. What, what in your background prepared you or motivated you to do this really important work? You know, I think it all starts with the foundation of that I love people. I believe that we have breakthroughs inside of us, that we have we have the possibility of doing well. And I've been a, a very voracious reader of biographies of people through through my life. And the one ingredient that I've seen in the best leaders, whether they're in business, politics, teaching, coaching, is they're, they're realistically optimistic with an accent on the optimistic. And that means that we believe we can change, we can get better. And so um, my whole life, I realized that we're all in the people business. It's we, how far you go depends upon how much you grow and help others grow. And so really, that's really been the focus most of all is that uh, this foundational belief. I saw it as a swimming coach. I'd take some athletes who, you know, who really didn't believe in themselves. And really, it wasn't so much about stroke technique. It was about their, their minds and their hearts breaking through those fears and obstacles. Ultimately, we break through one thing, break from fear to love and faith. And that's it. And every breakthrough breaks down into that. So it's been my focus, my passion, my joy to help people break through. <laughs> I got to unpack some things here. First of all, uh, I love the idea of realistic uh, optimism. And, uh, I, you know, I do coach uh, uh, C-suite people. I've got three coaching clients right now. And we were just talking about optimism today. Is like one of the key things you have to have as a leader is a high level of optimism why do you think that is? Because I, I do believe it. It's been been part of my experience as 30 years and, and now CEO of my own company. I believe that optimism is contagious. And, and yes, we have to be realist. We have to understand where our business is at and where the challenges are. But also, we are, you know, our mood affects the people around us. So tell us a little bit more about optimism, why that's so important in your opinion. Well, I think it comes down to what I call the Pygmalion effect. The Pygmalion effect is has been around in psychology forever. And every great leader must be a positive Pygmalion. The Pygmalion effect means that our thoughts and our beliefs and our expectations are magnetic. Just as you said, it's contagious. That as we think about others, we're not only, we're actually pulling them in the direction of the way we think about them. So the reason why it's so crucial to have that level of optimism is the world is changing, business is changing. If you If I think about my speaking today compared to five years ago, I have to do things in 45 minutes that I used to do in four hours. And, I, and if you don't believe in the possibility of change, if you don't believe that we can get better each and every day, all right, then you're going to be going backwards. And so that optimism absolutely is the core of every great leader, every great parent. Yeah, a great place to look at it is look in terms of your own children. You want them to go to the highest level and you believe that they can because what you focus on is what you create, all right? And that's really the, the key thing. If you focus on what you don't want, you get what you don't want. You focus on what you do want, you begin to move in that direction um, because vision becomes reality. So this is an interesting question. So related to breakthrough. So we, I'm naturally optimistic. I have been for most of my life. So it's natural for me to be optimistic. We may have leaders and listeners on the show that might say, you know what? I don't believe in this Pollyanna stuff. I'm a realist. I, I have to face reality. Um, how can we help those leaders think about how to break through into a, more of an optimistic mindset? What, what do you think holds people back? You mentioned fear. This is interesting to me. Fear is part of our challenge. A lot of times, I saw this in 22 years in corporate. I saw fear-based decisions being the biggest problem with poor leaders is they feared being exposed. They feared not having the right answer. They feared losing their jobs. And fear was a big issue. So tell us a little bit about how do we break into, if we're, uh, if we're negative or we're at least a realist, how do we break through into an optimistic mindset? Well, I think it comes down to, number one, all right, letting go of comparison. Comparison really holds you back as a leader. And, that, and the shift is to focus on controlling three controllables. That's, that's really what the basis is, what I call breakthrough leadership. Um, my mentor... Uh, one of the people I wrote about in this newest book, Lessons from the Legend, and actually my first book, Beyond Success, 
was the greatest men's college basketball coach of all time. His name was John Wooden. Um, if you, anybody doesn't know who's watching the show, John Wooden was, won 10 national championships at UCLA. No other coach in men's history has won more than five. But Coach Wooden was absolutely positively an even better leader, person, teacher than he was a coach. Mm -hmm. And his focus was on controlling your controllables. In 27 years at UCLA, the greatest coach of all time never said the words winning or losing to his players. Now, did he want to win? Oh, yeah. But what he wanted more was for everyone he was, that was a, a, a part of UCLA basketball to focus on a definition of success that led to focusing on your controllables. Success is peace of mind. It comes from knowing you've given the best of what you're capable. So all leaders want results, but great leaders focus on what you put in to get to the results rather than the results out themselves. You've got to focus on shaping your future. All right, and that's about vision. Every great leader's got to start with vision. And there's two aspects to that. Go into that in a minute. Second is about energy. Um, if you listen to any great athlete, they'll often talk about the difference in their performance was one of energy, not talent. Uh, talent is there. Uh, and the highest levels, there's a lot of talent, but it's that energy that you put into your preparation, energy you put into your performance. And finally, is to build people, build teams, and build relationships. Again, every business is a people business. All right? And so those three controllables, how you shape your future, how you build energy, energize and engage your team, and how you build people, teams, and relationships is how you can shift to that optimism. Because if you think about it, when, you, when we're focusing on the things we do control, that's when we feel momentum. That's when we feel confidence. That's when we feel optimistic. It's when we try to control things we don't control that we start to create that fear. It's really, this is, this is powerful that you say that, and I can give you a real world example of it. When I first took over my first manufacturing plant, I was 32 years old, and I didn't know how to run a manufacturing plant, but I knew people and I love people. So I spent a lot of time on the manufacturing shop floor, built relationships, uh, you know, learned where the challenges were, fixed the things that I knew that needed to be fixed. But I was a very present leader, and my the results of the business over time just went through the roof, right? And a lot of my peers said, what are you doing to get the numbers you're doing, you're getting? And I could not explain it. And I had a trouble. And it take, it's taken me till now, the last 10 years where I've become an author and I've written about stuff that I realized it was all I was doing was building relationships and getting to know my people and understanding what their challenges were and, and really getting to know them being present. And it was like, I controlled the things that I could control and the numbers came out much better. And so they wanted to know the secret sauce. And I'm like, there is no secret sauce. It's really about people. So I'm love that you say that. It really is. I, I'll give you another story that fits that exact same thing. In my corporate career, um, we, my company was in a bad shape and everybody said it's the market because uh, we were heavily in, uh, involved in transportation re regarding the oil industry. And at that time, the price of oil had plummeted, so construction had stopped. So we were, and everybody's saying, well, it's the market. We, we have to wait for the market to rebound. I said, it's not the market, it's us. We don't mm -hmm. support, operations hate sales. Sales hates operations. They both hate the home office just a little bit more. Uh, and so I, I had a, a CEO, I was vice president of marketing and sales, and I went to the CEO, who was a very optimistic guy, and said, you know, I really believe that we ha can do new things if we start to support each other. So that's mm -hmm. actually a career started. I started doing team building in my own company. And the transformation on the bottom line was astonishing. I mean, we had the, one of the greatest turnarounds in the transportation industry, but we weren't focused on the numbers. We were focused on building those relationships. By the time we finished that series of team building, Never was there an operations meeting without people from sales and marketing and vice versa. And we started rocking. We did things that were always there, but we never saw them because we were so busy, both kind of closed up in our own silos. So it, you nailed it. it the, the secret sauce is building people, teams, and relationships. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, it's funny. You touched on something. I just talked to one of my uh, CEO leaders that I'm working with is the idea of the enemy is outside the four walls. It's something I've always preached. In fact, my second book is called All in the Same Boat. That's the message, right? Is that the enemy, when I was a submarine officer, the enemy was outside the hull. It was the 
the, the, the ocean pressure that wanted to crush us and send us to the bottom of the ocean. And if we didn't work together, that could happen, right? So when I got to business, it was easy for me to say the enemy is outside the four walls. It's not inside the four walls. It's not marketing. It's not sales. It's not, it's not QA. It's not production. We are all in it together. The people outside these four walls want us to fail, right? And the only people that want us to succeed are the people inside these four walls. And, that, and that's a different mindset for, for leaders. It's a beautiful mindset. You know, when I was a swimming coach, I had a great, great run as a swimming coach. My team became one of the largest teams in America. People always said swimming is an individual sport. They could be, could not be farther from the truth because it, when we worked together the way we could in practice, it was almost as if we had a current pushing us faster. And when mm. we start to move, instead of we go to ego, it was this, we had to turn and swim into that. So we all rose together. It was amazing. When we were flowing, it was as if everyone was break, was creating this magical form of momentum together. The same thing happens in an organization. That's what a culture is really most about. An unstoppable culture comes from we go, not ego. Mm, I love that. I love that. But culture is a big thing. I love that you mentioned it because I think it's one of the things that that leaders can is are ultimately responsible for is, is creating, maintaining the culture that they have within the organization. So when there is activity that is counter to the culture that you want to have in the organization, you have to put a stop to it quickly, right? Because that that's contagious, you know? And so the, the idea that, that culture is, is sort of natural and it just happens, yes, but the leader has to make that happen. You know, the leader has to be, and I, and I imagine, uh, you know, in your book, you talk about that with, with Coach Wooten because he's creating, he created winning cultures, right? He really did. He taught, he created a culture where, first of all, he believed that the, the big breakthrough from being good to great really came down to the difference between two words. When you're average or good, you're willing to support each other in the greater good of the team. But when you break through to being great, that's when you're absolutely eager. It's the difference between being willing and being eager. When you're eager, no job is too big, no job is too small. And so breaking through and representing that each day by focusing in on making the what you did with your organization where you were on the floor talking to people building people you were setting up a culture that said we're in this together mm. because you were sitting up in your office you know at, you know just talking to your few three vice presidents you were down there on the floor making it happen that is where culture begins if you don't live it it's not going to happen mm. yes absolutely powerful powerful words for sure um, so you, you, one of the things you say is that we're all leaders Now, most of us have been raised with this idea that, that there are very few leaders and there's lots of followers, chiefs and Indians, right? The idea, but you say it's different. We're all leaders in some respect. What's your perspective on this? Well, I, I think that it's really a vitally important key for people to understand that you are a self leader. You are the CEO of your own life. And what I mean by that is how do you show up every day? That's leadership. You're constantly teaching the people around you a way to deal with with adversity, to deal with prosperity, to deal with routine by how you show up. How do you deal with adversity? Um, that's another key. Most of all, what kind of impact do you have on the people around you? Uh, do you lift them up by when you walk in the door, but they have a sense that things are going to be better or do you push them down? So we're all leaders and that's the foundation of what every CEO wants everybody to be accountable and responsible. Uh, that means that they got to be self-leaders. They got to be, they understand that they are the CEOs of their own life. And when you feel that way, then you take ownership of your part of that team. If you don't feel like that, if you don't feel like you're a leader, then it's just a job. And that's really a vital, important key. So I've, I've loved the fact that I've spoken to about a million people over the last 34 wow. years. And that's part of the message I put at every single one of my events to make sure that every person there knows that they are a leader because they can... They can take steps to shape their future, to energize and engage themselves and the people around them. Because before you can energize anybody else, who must you energize and engage? Yourself, right? And finally, we are all in the business of building people, building teams, and building relationships. Those are the same whether you're a CEO or you're the newest newest team member on your in your organization. So when people feel that way, they start to feel like they they are accountable. They love taking personal responsibility for their, their contribution to the team. They feel important. That's the job of a CEO. That's the job of a leader. That's the job of a parent. Our job is to help the people that we lead, that we serve, that we love, to know they're important. Because mm -hmm. when people feel they're important, they rise to an oh yeah spirit. And when people feel unimportant, they fall away to an oh no spirit.
We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by the Salty Sailor Coffee Company, the official coffee of the Deep Leadership Podcast. Salty Sailor is a veteran-owned coffee brand on a mission to deliver premium, fresh roasted coffee while making a positive impact in the world. Their motto is drink coffee and do good, which reflects their commitment to making amazing coffee and actively supporting the military community. 10% of every order goes to the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, an organization dedicated to helping sailors, Marines, and their families in times of need. All our listeners get 10% off every order of their amazing coffee by using the discount code DEEP at checkout. So check them out at SaltySailorCoffee.com. This episode is brought to you by Leader Connect, a leadership training company and video platform founded by the leadership book author and Deep Leadership Podcast guest, Neil Jurd. Leader Connect is a video and podcast streaming platform for leaders and teams. Watch it alone or as a team, and each video supports you and your team, allowing you to improve performance and build a great culture. Join hundreds of experts and learn about leadership, planning, public speaking, team building, mindfulness, and a range of other subjects that will help you lead well and build a great team. I'm proud to say that I'm one of the experts on this platform. Leader Connect is offering a 10% discount to all deep leadership listeners. Go to leader-connect.co.uk and enter the code DEEP at checkout. Master your leadership with Leader Connect. Life is hard, but finding a really great podcast makes the days go by so much easier. Hi, my name is Blue Toulousma. I'm a writer, an emotional intelligence coach, and the host of Humanize with Blue Toulousma, a podcast where we believe that when you humanize everyone in the room, a great conversation is almost guaranteed. Join us every week here on ElectroCast as me and my guest co-hosts unpack big topics and interview even bigger personalities with a sense of humor and a dash of mischief. If you're looking for a new best friend in your head, we've got you covered. You know, you said something that's really important there. You know, I always say that people want to feel like they belong and they want to feel like they're doing valuable work. And I think sometimes we as leaders don't don't recognize that. We we see like I run manufacturing plants, so I have people that that weld parts and paint plant parts, and they they you know and they grind parts. And so we might take and think that that's not important to our role. And and so we have to recognize that these are real people. And one of the things that I found in my first plant was I connected when I talked to people and asked them what they did, they would always tell me the function they did. Like I, I, I put these parts together. I plate these parts. They, they would have tell me what they did. And I would say, well, what does it do? Like, what, what, what do you do? And, and so I was trying to get them to get to the point where they were making, we were making circuit breakers at this factory. And uh, eventually I got to the point where I said, you know what, they, they need to know the bigger picture for what they're doing. And we started talking about it. And so we, we taught them the idea that what they were doing was helping keep the lights on. So you're powering hospitals, you're powering schools, you're powering uh, the supermarket that you go shop at. Your work keeps the lights on for, for society. And it was just like sort of turning them onto that. And every time we had a big project, I would tell them like, we're doing this, we're doing an airport in Saudi Arabia. Your breakers are going into that airport. You're powering the lights at an airport runway. And it was almost like the people, there was a sense of pride in what they were doing. Again, it wasn't just like, Oh, I'm doing got the same job I got to do every day, but I was helping them see that their work made a difference. And people want to belong and they want to know that their work makes a difference. Does that make sense? That is that is brilliant. I loved uh, Coach Wooden's metaphor for what a team is, a basketball team. But it, it would apply it would apply to any kind of team. He said it's like a car. All right, you may have a superstar. He coach. We just lost Bill Walton this past uh, past week, or, and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Maybe they were the engine because they were that great. But guess what? That engine does nothing without wheels, right? And and guess what? Those wheels will fall off if you don't have hub, you know, lug nuts. And so maybe the 14th man on a 14-man roster of basketball never even gets into a game at UCLA. But because they re- they have such an important role, even though it may seem small at first, by letting them know that that, that they felt that sense of pride of I'm a part of this because I push those, I push that engine every day in practice. I may never get get in a game, but I work really hard in practice. And without that, they would not be as good as as they can be. And so when you build that into each person that they're important, that they matter, that they're significant, that they're part of something bigger, that we're all working it together and it would not be the same without their part of it, then you get people 
to really feel a sense of pride, a sense of, of sense of belonging, a sense of, of, of value. I love that. I love that. One of the things I say is that every sailor on a submarine is important to the mission. So we would take our most junior sailor and they had one function that they would do, which is smash trash. We'd compact the trash and we shoot it out of the bottom of the submarine. Now, this is not oil or any plastics, but all the stuff that's biodegraded, we shoot out of the bottom of the plant or out of the bottom of the submarine. And who do we give that job to? The most junior sailor. So the most junior sailor, we give responsibility to put a hole in the bottom of the submarine, right? And we trust them and we teach them, right? So they're, they're absolutely vital to that mission. Do you think the cook in the galley is not important to the mission? If we can't eat, right? If we don't have the fuel that we need to be able to do our job, carry out our mission, get home, then we're, we're, we're fail. Every sailor was critical to our mission. And I always taken that approach, the mindset that every one of our employees is critical critically important to the mission of our business. Otherwise, you wouldn't have them, right? That's absolutely, absolutely right. And, and to get people centered around a common, a common vision, each person is part of that vision may be unique. The, that cook or, versus that, that junior submarine sailor. I, and you never know when you're going to step up to the plate to be the most important person in that moment. I had a young swimmer who I coached for eight years, never made the Junior Olympics. One time, she finally made it exactly the time standard. And then she went out in the Junior Olympics, the slowest of the 64 qualifiers, won the silver medal, improved 12 seconds in a 100-meter race, and she was the reason our whole team, she ignited our whole team. She thought by looking at them, because every time we look at the people around us, part of us says, guess what? They're, they're part of my team. If they do well, then I can do well, and vice yeah. versa. Uh, you know, I'm known for having people break wooden boards in my event. Yeah. Looking people break boards, right? And I always teach this principle. It's vital in every organization. The whole team breaks through every single board. All right, that means your cheering, your support, your unstoppable, uh, uh, just totally full out support for each other. Sometimes it's the difference between somebody even stepping forward and going for it, and or it's supposed to staying on the sidelines. Uh, and as Gretzky, the great one in high hockey, said, "I missed a hundred percent of the shots I never took." Well, when the whole team breaks through every single board, you realize that every around you is important to you and you are important to them. And that's when you start to create that magnificent momentum. Mm, I love that. I love it. Absolutely love it. But just t- let's go back a little bit. You, you mentioned the term breakthrough leadership. Uh, can you unpack that a little bit more for us? Because I think that's, a, that's an essential thing. I mean, we kind of went through it pretty quick. What do you mean by the term breakthrough leadership? I, it, that's where it gets into that concept of three foundational controllables to okay. focus as a leader. I believe in the KISS principle, keep it simple, superstar. If you will focus on these three elements you put into to being a leader each day, you're going to create breakthrough results. The first is to shape your future. And there's two aspects of that. That's about vision. The first part is to understand that what you focus on is what you create. So it goes back to what we started our conversation with. Focus more on what you want to create. Uh, when it comes to an example, a metaphor, the most important ingredient in breaking through that one inch thick board is to look beyond the board. Mm-hmm. If you look the board, you get the board. You look beyond the board, you get the breakthrough. The second key to, to breakthrough vision to shaping your future is to not use your memory alone to see. Mm-hmm. I've asked my programs, I've asked close to a million people this question, what color is a yield sign? So everybody's less asking immediately answer. And 95% of people say yellow. Mm-hmm. Well, red, both signs are red and white. They're upside down triangles. And the question is, why don't we see them? Why? The reason is we use our memory to see. When you change the way you look at people, the people you look at change. Change the way you see yourself, the self you see will change. So step one is shape your future, and it's those two aspects of vision. The second step in breakthrough leadership is to energize and engage your team. When it comes to a human performance, when it comes to really overcoming obstacles, so much of it is energy. But most people think their energy is kind of like the weather. It's kind of like, mm-hmm. hope the weather's good for the family picnic. But our energy is a choice. It's a choice based upon two foundational keys. Number one, the way you move. Whenever you've been at your best, you've given your best presentation, you've been your most creative, you move your body differently than when you've not been your best. All right? So change the way you, if you want to move your business, you want to move your leadership, you got to move yourself. The second and even more powerful key to, to, to energy is purpose. Whenever you're full of purpose, you're full of energy. When you get to do what you love to do, when you get to do your show, John, it doesn't matter what else is going on because you love it, right? And you're 
is there for that show. Now, when I'm on stage, I am 25 years old. When I get off stage, I'm almost 70. But on stage, I am. <laughs> and that energy just flows out because I'm doing what I love to do. So movement comes with, with purpose. So the foundational key to purpose is to ask yourself, what am I truly grateful about? That'll focus you on your priorities. Your priorities will lead to your purpose. Um, one of the great books of all time was called Man's Search for Meaning. And it's a book by Viktor Frankl, who, who endured the concentration camps in Nazi Germany. And he said, those that, had, that endured, those that made it through, were, were those that had a purpose left undone. Uh, and so if you're not inspired, then you're expired. So purpose is the core of energy. So the second key is to energize and engage your team, which starts by energizing and engaging yourself. The third is to build people, teams, and relationships. Come back to that sense that whatever business you're in, manufacturing, high tech, whatever it is, it's a people business. Ultimately, it's about the people on your team and somebody that you're serving. And when you understand that, you realize as you did kind of just almost naturally from your time in the Navy, right? And then in your time um, in building manufacturing, that it was about the people on the floor. It was yeah. getting them to love what they do, to support one another, to make sure there weren't silos, to really appreciate them and recognize, recognize them, and they would soar to a high level. So how do you do that? You build people, teams, and relationships to authentic recognition, acknowledgement, appreciation, and most of all, by being present. I absolutely love that. Yeah, that's great. It's fantastic. And listeners to the show all know from my first book, I, I say this over and over again, that leadership is a people business. You're saying it over and over again, which cracks me up. So my listeners are going, yes, yes, this guy gets it. And uh, and uh, I love it because we 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 see it. We see the world in very, very much the same way. And again, I've done 30 years in the trenches. So I, you know, these things work. You know, listeners, are you saying, does it make sense? You know, it, it, it is is what I'm hearing just something that, that people say to write books? Is Brian and John lying to me? They're, we know we're not. This works. This this, this I've, I've got 30 years of practice that tells you this stuff works. So absolutely love this, Brian. It's fantastic. So the new book is called Lessons from the Legends. Now you put together these uh, these championship team building formulas. They come from Pat Summit. John uh, Wooden, who we've been talking about, like, again, these are championship coaches. Uh, tell us what you and in, what inspired. I mean, you've written 16 books, right? So why this book now? What what inspired you to write this book at this time? Well, to me, John, right now, more than any time in my lifetime, and I'm going to be 70 this year. I believe that it's we got to move from from ego to we go. Mm. Um, these two coaches were incredibly different in style. Pat Summit was in many ways to women's basketball, what John Wooden was to men's basketball. Um, Gino Ariyama at, at UConn may have a question about that, but he, he had a, an immense amount of respect for Pat Summit. Pat Summit was intense. She could melt steel with her, with her glare. John Wooden was very gentlemanly and, and seemingly very mild manner. He got his point across. So they had different styles, but fundamentally... They represent the things that I think can turn our country into a new, uh, into a way it really can be. They represent what leaders could really are about. First, they were humble. Mm. So many people think that humility, I, 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 I've seen this more in the last seven, eight years. People think somehow humility is a weakness. No, because they think, well, if you're humble, you can't be confident. You can be very confident, very humble. Because being humble doesn't mean you think less of yourself. It means you think of yourself less. Right? And But here's the key to humility, and they both represented it. Only those who are humble are lifelong learners. Only those who are humble are always looking to find a way to improve, to get better. They don't think they're already there. That's a message that I think a great leader must, we must recapture that. Because we have too much of, if I'm the leader, I have to be right. No, right? You have to learn. That's what really makes the difference. Um, they both really taught foundational keys to being a, a great human being even more than being a great basketball player. Uh, the basketball stuff was the easy part. It was about really building a foundation. So they each had models that they built into every practice, into every game, into every day. Um, what John Wooden's was called the pyramid of success. Pat Summits all right, was her definite dozen. But they were foundational keys about being a hard worker, about losing with dignity and representing that when you lose, you have a chance to learn, right? And that losing isn't necessarily about the scoreboard. Losing is about uh, is about understanding what you can do to get better. 
and using it as a, a foundation to improve all the time. So I wanted to write about a man and a woman who were great coaches, two people with different styles, but ultimately whose principles, core principles of integrity, of humility, of team first, of, uh, of really balance that, uh, that really could make a difference in our young people and our leaders um, and in every human being. So, uh, you know, they both were pretty phenomenal human beings. I was friends with John Wooden, so it was one of the great gifts of my life. I never had the privilege of meeting Pat Summits, but learning about her to write this book was phenomenal. And I got to know her son, who's a great guy. And I really, really appreciated the opportunity to to put both of these together to understand that we can have different styles, but we can disagree without being disagreeable. But if we come from a core, a foundation of, of we go versus ego, we can change our businesses, we can change our culture, we can change our world. Absolutely. Fantastic. Now, who should read this book? Who is it written for? Well, it's written for, remember, I said everybody's a leader, so it's written for pretty much everybody. <laughs> Great value for, for definitely in the business world. So I would highly recommend it to your listeners who are, you know, have people that are leaders, managers, uh, VPs. But I also think it has an awful lot to do with family. So I, I really believe it's for everyone, men, women. Um, it's a book about, about core principles that we can all decide to move towards. Um, ultimately, I realized that everything I teach is about choices. And these two represented the kinds of choices that, that just build respect. They understand that you don't demand loyalty. You build loyalty by being loyal. I love that. And again, listeners, this is how we become better leaders is we read the stories of the people who have gone before us and who better than these two legends of the game, right? To learn from them, learn what they did, learn how they became successful and again, how they managed and how they dealt with the people side of it. Fantastic. I'm so excited that you've written this book. Such a fantastic book, such a great idea for a book as well to get these lessons out there for people. Uh, what final message would you like to leave with our listeners right now? Well, you know, I think the most important thing that I teach, John, is the foundation of helping people know they're important it comes down to one simple thing. And it's what you did on your floor uh, in your manufacturing company is being fully present. When you're fully present, you say to people beyond words, unshakably, unfakeably, you are important. Being fully present means 100% of your mind, body, and spirit is with the person you're with where they are now. And when you're fully present, it's more difficult today because we're on our cell phones all the time. But when you're with people, they know instantly if you're fully there. And they know instantly if you're not fully there, if your mind's somewhere else. And every time you're fully present, you say to that person, you are important, you matter, you count. And the most simple and practical way to develop being more present is to listen before you formulate your response. Most of the time we're talking, we're thinking about what we're going to say. But if we just take it in first, we'll still be able to respond. But by doing that, we're, we're filling them with a sense that they have value, that, they're, that you respect them, that what they have to say has, has some importance. So there's nothing you can do that's more important than, than being fully present for the people in your life. The past is history. The future a mystery. The gift is now. That's why we call it the present. I cannot add any more to that comment, Brian. That is fantastic. And leaders, listen to those words, right? Rewind it. Just play that back again. And you want to know if you want to be go from an ordinary leader to an extraordinary leader, just listen to that over and over again. That's exactly what you need to do. Brian, that's fantastic. I really appreciate those words. Uh, they're inspirational. They're inspiring me. I'm fired up. I want to go go to work right right now and go fire up my team. That's fantastic. Uh, I love it. Be present. And uh, I hate. Hey, if you haven't heard me say that before, uh, you've just heard Brian say that. It's something I truly believe in. I, I think it's fantastic. Brian, how can our listeners find out more about you and all these books you've written, especially the latest book? Well, you can get the book wherever you buy books. So that's uh, that's easy. And um, my website is where I, I get book from speaking for speaking. It's just www.brianbyro.com. Um, it's B-R-I-A-N-B-I-R-O. And I love people. I love, uh, I'm out here in Arizona today to be able to speak to a, a really neat company. And that's what I do. It's what I was put on earth to do. So I love you if you visit my website and say hello, and I will always respond back. Fantastic. And we're going to put links in the show notes for all of Brian's resources. Hey guys, listen up, get that book. Listen, listen, if you want to become a better leader, learn the lessons for the people who have gone before you, especially these two legends. 
get the book, pick it up. And again, I encourage you to read at least one book a month as a leader. You read 12 books a year. You can read 120 books in a 10-year career. Uh, do it. Read a book. This is a great book, great example. Uh, and again, Brian is someone that has got the right message for you to become a really effective leader. Brian, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for bringing your energy, bringing your passion, and all of this information to our, our audience because I know we're all better because of it. So thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, John. You're doing a great job. I really, I, as I said, I, we probably could talk for another two hours, but, uh, you know, I guess we got to get on with whatever we got to get on with. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll stay connected, though. So thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Have you ever wondered what actually happens in Congress every day? Stay informed on Capitol Hill's daily happenings with a concise, factual summary of the Senate and House of Representatives activities from the previous session, free from bias, on the Congressional Record Daily Digest podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and discover the process from the heart of U.S. politics. The Congressional Record Daily Digest, an Electric Cast production. Hey there, fabulous souls. I'm Stephanie Baklaan. And I'm Eden Alpert. And we're the hosts of the brand new podcast, Unapologetically Fab. Get ready to join us on an amazing and real journey as we dive into life after 40 and own it. We're all about changing the narrative, leaning into who you are, and living a life by your own design. Join us as we embrace life unapologetically and redefine success. This is Unapologetically Fab. An Electric Cast production. See you there. Electric Cast.